Well, good evening and welcome to Wednesday in the Word. I'm Pastor Matt Skiles. I want to thank you for joining with us here for our weekly online study of God's Word hosted by Lebanon Rock Church. Certainly glad to have you with us from wherever you are joining us from. We are continuing our current lesson series from the book of Hebrews. We'll be looking at lesson number five tonight. And we'll get more into detail on that after we open in prayer. As always, I want to remind everybody to make sure that you have brought your Bibles with you or your smartphones or uh, perhaps uh, your tablets, whatever your Bible app is that you have. And also make sure if you brought something to drink, Pastor Matt, of course, brought his cup of coffee as always. And I uh, want you to settle in this evening as we begin this evening's study. Again, we are in the book of Hebrews uh, the entire series that we've talked about is from the book of Hebrews, and our theme here in the book of Hebrews is let us go on to perfection in Jesus Christ. And we're going to be looking at lesson number five tonight, which is pilgrims should make progress. And we're going to be looking at a section of scripture from Hebrews chapter five, starting at verse number 11 going all the way through to Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 20. Just to give you a little review, we have been focusing in the previous four lessons on how not only was Jesus Christ the Savior, not only was he the Messiah, but the writer of Hebrews pointed out how Jesus was greater than the prophets, greater than the angels. We talked in lesson three how he was greater than Moses. We focused last week in our lesson on how he was greater as a high priest than Aaron, Jesus being our great high priest. And so tonight, we're going to pick it up here in Hebrews chapter 5, starting at verse 11, going through into chapter 6 to verse number 20, really looking at how we as Christians should be progressing and growing spiritually. So we'll get right into the lesson. So join with me as we open in prayer and begin this evening's study. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity that we have to once again open up the Word of God and receive the lesson from the Holy Scriptures. And we thank you for this study in the book of Hebrews. We ask that you would give your word free course in our hearts and in our lives. And Father, we pray that you'll bless each and every student that is hearing this lesson tonight. Anoint the teacher and Lord, give your word free course now. Bless us, Lord, for we know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, if you'd like to, please go with me, if you would, to the book of Hebrews chapter 5, and we're going to start at verse number 11, and uh, that's where our study will start. Now, by way of introduction, uh, this fifth lesson is really going to summarize the main message um, of this difficult and somewhat often misunderstood section here in the letter of Hebrews. Israel wanted to go back to Egypt, and we talked about that in a previous lesson, how the writer of Hebrews often would recite the story and recall the story of the children of Israel wanting to go back to Egypt's bondage and back to the life as slaves in Egypt. And because that mindset was so prevalent with them, a whole generation of the Israelites did not get to enter into the promised land and what God had promised them when he said he would deliver them out of bondage. What's ironic is that the Jews were safely delivered out of Egypt, but they never enjoyed the promised rest in Canaan. And we believers today can make the same mistake. Um, because in this section, we're going to talk about how we need to be continually making progress and maturing and growing in Christ and not be like the example of the Israelites in the Old Testament that wanted to go back, that murmured and grumbled and complained and often brought a lot of stress and anxiety and anger into the life of Moses, who was leading them out of bondage. And just like the children of Israel wanting to go back to Egypt, many of the Hebrew Christians that this letter is written to originally 2,000 years ago, they also were contemplating the notion of going back to that life of, of uh, as Jews and f falling back into Judaism. And we've talked about that in previous lessons. And so tonight we're going to look at how 
We as Christian believers, once we've been set free from the law of sin and death, once we have been delivered from the bondage of sin, how we can move forward and make progress. The children of Israel eventually made it to the promised land of Canaan, but they wandered 40 years in the wilderness because an entire generation of people had to pass away before that generation following them could enter into the promised land. And we read in the scripture that only Joshua and Caleb were the two men of their generation that made it into the promised land. What a tragedy, but it is a good example for us to follow. So let's look at point number one tonight as we talk about this lesson, pilgrims should make progress. And the first point is this, the marks of spiritual immaturity. The sparks or marks of spiritual immaturity. Let me rephrase that again. I got tongue-tied there. Point number one is the marks of spiritual immaturity. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 5, and we're going to read verses 11 through 14. And the writer of Hebrews says these words, Of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered. Seeing you are dull of hearing. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is of age. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of us have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, the writer was about to begin his explanation here of the heavenly priesthood of Christ, but he was not sure the readers were ready for what he had to teach. The problem was not that he was a dull teacher, but that they were, quote, dull of hearing. Now, the word dull translated uh, in Hebrews 5 and 11 is translated to mean slothful. It's also found in Hebrews 6 and 12. And it refers to the condition of spiritual apathy and laziness that prevents someone from growing and developing spiritually. So what are the marks then of spiritual immaturity? Because that's our first point here tonight. What are the marks of spiritual immaturity? Well, the first mark obviously is a dullness toward the word of God. Again, Hebrews 5 and 11, the writer says, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Now, these Hebrew believers started on their backward journey by drifting away from the Word. And we saw that in our study of Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And then in Hebrews 3 and 7, reading all the way through to Hebrews 4 and 13, we also see where they were doubting the Word. They were not only dull of hearing, they were having a difficult time uh, uh, drifting away from hearing the Word of God, but then they, they also were doubting what they were hearing. They were questioning what was being preached. That's a sign of spiritual immaturity, is a dullness towards the Word of God. And as a result, the writer of Hebrews says that they were dull of hearing. So they were unable to not only receive what was being taught or being preached, but also they simply couldn't believe in their heart of hearts what was being told. And, and they, didn't, they did have this attitude and this mindset where they were unable to listen to the Word of God, to receive it, and then act upon it in obedience. And they did have the same attitude that the, that the Thessalonians had. Paul wrote these words in 1 Thessalonians 2 and 13. For this cause also we thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but it is 
in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. So we see here that the Hebrews did not have the attitude that the Thessalonians had. The church in Thessalonica was so hungry for the word, they heard it, they received it, and they believed it. And on the flip side of the coin, you have these Hebrew believers that the writer of Hebrews is writing this letter to, and they're not, they're not even able to hear the word. They're, they're not obedient to the word because they doubt it and they won't act on it. That's why the scripture makes it very, very clear. And I believe if you read the book of James, you see where it says that we are to be not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And so one of the first symptoms of a person that begins to regress spiritually uh, is a dullness towards the Bible, a dullness towards hearing what the word of God says. Uh, and really that dullness uh, is, is, is beginning to happen in the heart and then it all of a sudden begins to creep into the mind. And the next thing you know, we no longer want to hear the word of God. People, many times that I've, I've worked with in the past and I've known in the past have often said, I really, I'm really having a hard time uh, with our new pastor or with our new preacher. I don't like the way he preaches. I don't like the way he brings the message. A lot of times that's just that we're dull of hearing. Uh, I've been in churches that have gone through pastoral changes, and I can tell you it's not easy to adjust and accept a new pastor, especially when you've had someone that's been faithful to you and the congregation. But the Word of God is still the Word of God. It may be presented and preached a little bit different way, but let's not be dull of hearing. Let's not be dull towards the Word of God. Let's make sure that we're hearing the word and we're receiving the word. Another sign of spiritual immaturity is the inability to share. Now, Hebrews 5 and verse 12, if you want to, if you're there in your Bibles or on your Bible app, you can look at verse 12 of Hebrews that says, For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such a one as have need of milk and not of strong meat. The ability to share spiritual truth with others is a mark of Christian maturity. Not all Christians have the gift of teaching or preaching, but all can share what they learn from the word of God. One of the hardest lessons children have to learn is how to share. The recipients of the letter of the book of Hebrews, they had been Christians and believers long enough that they should have had the capacity to share God's word with others. Instead of helping others grow, these Hebrew believers were in need of learning again and having to go back and do what we call the first works over again. So. There's the inability to share. So we're dull to the word. That's one sign of one mark of immaturity. Another mark of immaturity is the inability to share. And then the third, the third mark of spiritual immaturity is, is the baby food diet, quote unquote. And let's go and look at Hebrews 5 and look at verse 12 and verse 13. And the writer says, For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe or a baby. Now, milk is pre-digested food. I think everybody knows that. And it is especially suited to feed babies. But only those who have teeth can enjoy solid food like meat and vegetables and, 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 and other solid foods. The writer here of Hebrews defines the milk as the first principles of the oracles of God. Those first things that we learn as baby Christians. The meat of the word is the teaching about our Lord's ministry now in heaven as our great high priest. 
And the writer wanted to give this meat of the word to these Hebrew believers, but they simply were not ready for it. The milk of the word refers to what Jesus Christ did on earth, his birth, his life, his death. Uh, his teachings, his miracles, his resurrection. The meat of the word refers to what Jesus Christ is doing now, seated at the right hand of the Father as our great high priest and advocate with the Father. That is what Jesus is doing. And we began the Christian life on the basis of his finished work on earth. So as new Christians, we, we, we absorb and digest the milk of the word. We know Jesus loves us. We know Jesus died for us. We know Jesus gave his life and has given us salvation and eternal life. And that's the, the beauty of being a new convert and being born again. But over time, just like my children, when they were babies, they drank a formula. Later, they drank milk. Um, and they gradually moved on to solid food. And now they're both adults. And and while milk is still a very important part of any diet, I think we need milk because it, it provides, uh, obviously, nutritious benefits to our bodies. We can't drink milk all the time. You have to have fruits and vegetables and other solid foods to have a healthy lifestyle and a healthy diet. And what the writer of Hebrews here is saying is you've got to stop being babies and get off the baby food diet and start to really truly digest what the Word of God is saying. And that's very important. Too many Christians want to stay babies in Christ. They they don't want to uh they, they don't want to graduate up to the solid food. And they don't want to try to grow and mature. And that's one of the unfortunate marks of, of, of immaturity is that is that believers want to stay on what we call the baby food diet. Uh, another mark of immaturity is unskill uh, is is lacking skill or being unskillful in using the word of God. Hebrews chapter five. Let's look at verse number fourteen. If you're there in your Bibles, you can read. It says, "But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use." have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, as we grow in, the, in our knowledge and understanding of the Word of God, we learn to use it in our daily life. You apply what you learn in the Word of God, and you exercise your spiritual senses, so to speak. You develop spiritual understanding and discernment. That's a characteristic uh, that all Christians should have as we grow in Christ, we should have a greater understanding and knowledge of the Word of God, but also a greater spiritual sensitivity. And we can discern and, and know the things of God. Now, one of the one of the dominant characteristics of little children, <laughs> and it's common uh, that many little children lack the ability to discern. Uh, a baby will put anything in its mouth. I I uh, have a beautiful little niece. Her name is uh, Kennedy. She's a beautiful baby girl. I've seen her a couple of times. Um, and the last time that I went to visit my family, which would have been in January at my grandmother's funeral, visited with family for some time at my parents' home. And my sister brought over her family. And my beautiful little niece, uh, Kennedy, was there on the ground. And Everything she could get her hands on, she put in her mouth. That's what babies do. They put anything in their mouth. And, and, and as they get older, they learn that you can't put everything in your mouth. Eventually, as, as babies become toddlers, as toddlers become children, as children become adults, we learn you don't put things that you grab in your mouth. But babies do that. And to put that into a spiritual connotation, an immature believer will listen to anything that that they hear, a preacher or a teacher, maybe they're on the internet, maybe they're on television, maybe they're on the radio, uh, and, and, and they'll listen to someone and really not necessarily be able to identify or understand whether or not that individual is actually imparting the scriptures. Jesus told us to search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. 
And it's important that if we're listening to any Bible teachers or preachers, or if we're a part of a, of a Bible study, whether it's a small group, a weekly study, you're involved in Wednesday in the Word like this, be sure that you know whatever is being taught or whatever is being presented is the gospel. That's why we call this Wednesday in the Word, because we stick within the boundaries of the Word of God. We always refer to the Scriptures. Scripture should interpret Scripture, but also that's how we grow. That's how we mature as Christians. Uh, we don't want to be unskillful in our knowledge, in our understanding of the Word of God. We have spiritual senses and spiritual understanding. And it is so important that we understand that we have to avoid these things that can lead us astray. And we should be mindful how we how we study the Word of God and how we use the Word of God. The Apostle Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, verse 7 and 8, but refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. So the ability to understand and discern good and evil is a vital part of Christian maturity. And the nation of Israel in the day of Moses, when he led them out of, out of Egypt, lacked this discernment, failed to claim their promised inheritance. And the readers of the, of, of the letter of the Hebrews were in danger of making the exact same mistake. It is impossible to stand in the Christian life and, 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 and just kind of walk in the middle of the road. You can't do that. You can't stand still. You can't walk the middle of the road. You have to be going forward and claim God's blessings, or you go backwards and wander aimlessly uh, into a very spiritually confused, dark place. And nobody should have to be in that condition. You see, nobody can walk the middle of the road. I would not ever attempt to try to walk the middle of a highway, because eventually a car is going to hit me either coming from the north or from the south or from one direction or the other. You can't walk the middle of the road. You can't serve two masters. Uh, you can't try to, 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 uh, try to live your life according to the spirit and the flesh. The writer of Hebrews is saying here that you cannot be a middle-of-the-road Christian. Otherwise, you'll never reach that place of maturity that you need to reach in Jesus Christ. So we look here at these marks of spiritual immaturity. So let's move on now to our second point tonight. Our second point tonight is the call to spiritual maturity. And let's go to Hebrews chapter 6, and let's look at verse number 1. We've got 12 verses to read, Hebrews 6, and we're going to go from 1 to 12. And this is what the writer says. He says, therefore, Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, Meet for them by whom it is dressed receiveth blessing from God, but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you, and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, 
which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, there's that word again, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So no one can escape coming into the world as a child, as a baby, because that's the only way that we can get on this earth. But it is tragic when a baby fails to mature. No matter how much parents and grandparents love to hold and cuddle a baby, eventually it's every parent's and family's desire to see that baby grow up and enjoy a full life as a mature adult. God has the same desire for his children. That is why he tells us, go on to perfection in Hebrews 6 and 1. It is a call to spiritual progress. If we are going to make progress, we have to leave the childhood things behind and go forward in spiritual growth. Again, we read there in Hebrews 6, 1, 2, and 3, the writer says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God of the doctrine of baptisms and laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. The lesson here in Hebrews chapter 6 in these first three or four verses is very, very clear. The writer is saying, listen, you've laid a foundation. You know the, the basics, the ABCs of your faith in Christianity. You, you, you've reached a place where you know who God is. Now let's move on. Let's begin to mature and let's continue to, to go forward. Uh, you can't just simply sit back and say, well, I'll just maintain. Uh, that's, that's not the way that we grow. That's not the way that we mature as Christians. God is wanting us to grow up and move on to maturity. In, 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 in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the apostle Paul says in that wonderful excerpt, of scriptures there from, from verse number four all the way down to the end of the chapter speaks of love. And in one particular section in 1 Corinthians 13, the Apostle Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I reasoned like a child. I acted like a child. But when I became a man, I put childish things away or I put childish things behind me. I'm just paraphrasing that scripture there in 1 Corinthians 13. But what Paul was saying was, when I was a child, I acted like a child. But when I became a man, I grew up and I, and I put away childish things. And the writer of Hebrews is saying, you know the basics. You know what you need to know about your understanding of who Jesus Christ is. He's died for you. He gave his life and his blood. You are born again by the Holy Spirit. You are saved by grace through faith. So let's move on from that. Let's, let's grow up and move forward and go on from there. That's the beauty of the Christian life is we should be ever learning and growing and maturing. Unfortunately, there are some people that are ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth, as one passage in the New Testament says. But when we truly, truly, truly will understand that we have a call to spiritual maturity, we'll answer it and we'll go forward. So let's, let's look here at Hebrews chapter 6. I want to read verses 4 through 6 and give a little explanation on that. And the writer says in Hebrews chapter 6, again, let's look at verses 4, 5, and 6 here. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, who were once saved and came to Christ, and have tasted of a heavenly gift, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. Now the root word for verb 
or the root word for the verb fall away, the term fall away, is from the Greek word apostasia, which is where we get the word apostasy. Now, when we fail to mature and we fall away from the Lord Jesus Christ, when we do confess and repent and turn back to the Lord, we put Christ to an open shame. Uh, the writer did not say that these people who fall away from the Lord could never be brought back to repentance. He said that they could not be brought to repentance while they were treating Jesus in such a shameful way. We can't live according to the flesh. We can't live according to a sinful mindset and it not have an effect on us and have an effect on our testimony. We humiliate Christ and we we do great disservice to the kingdom of God when we don't live out the life that we profess, uh, when we live in a very hypocritical manner, or when we taste and see that God is good and we've received salvation and then we fall away. To come back is a very humiliating experience, not only for the Christian believer, but also for the Christ and the Savior that we serve. Uh, that's why it's so sad whenever we see prominent Christian people, whether they're people in leadership or ministry or just prominent people that are Christians that claim the name of Jesus Christ, when they falter and fail, it is a shame. It is a shame. You know, I, I, uh, I, I, I'm not one to judge anybody. And I'm not one to cast stones at anyone because Jesus said, he that is without sin can cast the first stone. And we all live in a house of glass, so we have no stones to throw. But it really is tragic when someone uh, claims to be a Christian and then they fall into sin and they, 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 they have a moral failure or they sin and fall, fall away from God. Because when they do come back, uh, a lot of people are very, are very uh, not, only, not only people questioning them, uh, but people are also very uh, uh, unkind and uh, and indifferent to them, ambivalent, ambivalent to them because they're like, well, they've done this before, and 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 it doesn't have the effect that it should have. Um, you know, Peter went out and wept bitterly because he rejected Jesus Christ three times. He, 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 he denied him three times, but Jesus restored him. But I assure you, Peter kept that with him his whole life. And when we do falter and fail and we come back to God, uh, we should understand that the call to spiritual maturity is for us to stay close to God, to not regress and fall back, not take one step forward and then two steps back. We have to keep making progress each and every day. And because, like we read here in, in, in the scriptures here in, 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 the, in the Word of God, if you look at the scriptures, there in Hebrews 6, 1 through 20, we're only, we're only going to get to verse 12 tonight, but, but the writer of Hebrews also likens a unproductive Christian, a, un, a, a spiritually immature Christian, to an unproductive field. Because he goes on in verse number 7 of Hebrews 6, we're going to read it down to verse 12 here, as, as we uh, are turning the corner here and getting to, con getting to the conclusion. The writer says in Hebrews 6, 7 through 12, For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you, and things that accompany salvation. Though we thus speak, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Now, an unproductive Christian, an un, a spiritually immature Christian is an unproductive Christian. And an unproductive Christian believer is like a field 
that fails to produce any yield or crops and 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 like a servant who is slothful and lazy in their service to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's the comparison. The writer of Hebrews says very clearly that the earth that brings in the rain that produces something, it's going to be blessed. So the earth that produces the the the, the herbs and the and the vegetables and the flowers, the things that make it productive, that's good ground. And it brings forth a harvest. But he goes on and writes, but that which bears thorns and briars is rejected and is very near to be cursed. And the end of that, it will be burned. It's a shame that there are unproductive Christians out there, but there are. There are. Much like a field somewhere that is that is not yielding good crops, uh, you you have to have good soil and good ground to be productive. Our role as Christians, our purpose as Christians, is to be spiritually mature. We need to be growing, and we need to be maturing in Christ. Many of us know the parable of the sower and the seed, and that seed fell on different types of ground. And there was the stony ground, there was the thorny ground, and then there was the good ground. And I want to be that good ground where that seed will land, it'll take root, and it will bring forth a harvest. I want to be good ground. Spiritually mature people, spiritually mature Christians are progressing every day of their life. Our job as Christians is to be spiritually mature people. We aren't just uh, we aren't supposed to be baby Christians our whole life. We are to be growing and maturing. Just like we were born into this world, we become adults and we're aging and growing older every day and maturing every day. We should also be doing the same thing in our spiritual life. That is what God wants us to do. So as we close and bring this to a conclusion, we've seen in this fifth lesson here tonight that spiritual maturity is vital for our Christian life. We cannot remain as spiritual babies, but we must mature and move from the milk of the word to the meat of the word. And this will bring us to a place of spiritual maturity and growth in the Lord and make us more productive for the kingdom of God. So I thank you for joining with me in this fifth lesson tonight. Let's purpose in our heart that we're going to grow and become spiritually mature people and spiritually mature Christians. So join with me now as we bring our study to a close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you again for the opportunity and the privilege to not only study this wonderful book of Hebrews, but impart the lesson in the word of God to our hearts and our souls tonight. Father, help us to be growing and maturing spiritually. Lord, help us to continue to be productive. Help us to continually have spiritual discernment and understanding. Help us, Lord, to always remember that we cannot be babes in Christ. We must be growing each and every day. Father, we pray that you'll bless us the rest of this week. Help us to continue to stay faithful to your word, faithful to prayer, and continually faithful to growing and maturing spiritually. Father, we pray you'll bless each and every one of our listeners and those that are joining with us uh, today. We thank you for those that have gathered with us to be a part of tonight's study. Bless them, prosper them, and keep them in health, even as their soul prospers. Father, we pray that you'll dismiss us now from this very important time of study, but not from your presence. Bring us back Sunday morning for our online worship and message, and bring us back next week as we continue our study in the book of Hebrews with lesson number six. And we give you thanks and praise, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining with me and being a part of our online study. And from all of us here at Lebanon Rock Church, have a wonderful evening. Have a blessed remainder to your week. We look forward to seeing you all with us when we gather for our online worship and message. Be sure to join us next week as we continue with Lesson 6 and Wednesday in the Word. But God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. And we look forward to seeing you with us next time.